Gaijin Entertainment presents a new show, The Shooting Range. You are watching The Shooting Range, a weekly show for all tankers and airmen of War Thunder. In this episode, The Winged Spider, P61 Black Widow, Hash Rounds, How to Destroy an Enemy Tank with Its Own Armor, Gaijin Hotline, we answer questions that you left in the comments. But first, a new dimension of freedom, flying with a keyboard. Quite a few pilots think that you don't really need to use your keyboard to reign supreme in the skies. All hail the mighty mouse! And you know what? These players are right, it is a perfectly valid playstyle, especially in arcade battles. And we're not talking about the players who have been using joysticks the whole time. Carry on, folks. But at the same time, this mouse-only approach is somewhat limiting. You won't feel it while attacking, that's true. And you can certainly compete with other players while using just a couple of buttons for throttle control. But under fire, it's a completely different story. To successfully disengage from an attacking enemy aircraft, you have to do two things at once, track the opponent and dodge enemy bullets. In a situation like this, two separate controllers would certainly come in handy. And then there are defensive maneuvers. Let's take, for instance, a simple evasive move, the corkscrew barrel roll. We'll hold the buttons for ailerons, rudder and elevator for upwards pitch, all at the same time while using the mouse to look around the plane. Ain't that convenient? If the enemy pilot does something sketchy, you will see it and will have time to react. Easy to do with a keyboard, quite impossible with just a mouse. Another example. In arcade mode, you can do some crazy things with your rudder, like using a full elevator plus rudder combination to make an extra tight turn, a move that is reminiscent of Hinari Komi, a real-life maneuver that Japanese pilots sometimes used in dogfighting. Once again, keyboard is key, pun intended, and you still get to look around with your trusty mouse. You would be right to object. What about special gaming mouses with a plethora of features, buttons and whatnot? These devices are very convenient, that's true. But you hold them in one hand, and this hand has to take care of everything now. Rather counterintuitive, don't you think? All in all, if you want to fly like an ace, keyboard is your friend, trust us. It's quite easy and rewarding to learn. Try it and you will be performing complex stunts in no time. And in a few seconds we'll speak about the first operational US warplane designed as a night fighter. Keep watching! It is no coincidence that this fighter-bomber was named after one of the most dangerous spiders on the planet. It has some really devastating firepower. Not only it is armed with four 20mm Hispano cannons, some modifications can also carry up to 1,000 pounds of bombs. And that's not all. Black Widow was also equipped with four 50 cal machine guns mounted in a remote-controlled dorsal turret. What that means is that P-61 is a deadly threat to both air and ground targets. Yeah, it is not a graceful flyer. It is somewhat cumbersome, and the additional weight on bombs doesn't improve matters one bit. But who cares? You have loads of guns! The turret is capable of a full 360 degrees rotation and 90 degrees elevation, while an armor-piercing round from a Spano can penetrate 27 millimeters of armor from a distance of 500 meters. By the way, most armored vehicles have way less armor above their engine compartments. In other words, it's hunting season, and T-34s, Panthers, Cromwells are all game. Of course, that doesn't mean you should refrain from bombing. We just suggest that you should save your bombs for more interesting targets. First and foremost, anti-aircraft guns that are hard to take out with cannons. Just don't forget to turn your attention to enemy armored vehicles when opportunity presents itself. Look out for medium tanks. After you've chosen a target, go for a dive and send a short burst of rounds at its engine compartment or the roof of the turret. Just think about it. A one-second burst mass of your guns is five and a half kilograms of whaling death. All in all, 800 rounds is more than enough for about five targets. We recommend universal ammunition belts, half AP, half fragmentation shells. Useful in pretty much any situation. 
Now that we started talking about ammunition, let's jump to the next topic, the tricky hash rounds. Most tankers are pretty familiar with high-explosive anti-tank shells, but what about high-explosive squash head rounds? Hash. In the US they call them the same thing, high-explosive plastic rounds, or HEP. Let's see it in action. First, we shoot a heavily armored target with a basic HEF, also known as the high-explosive fragmentation shell. No penetration, as expected. Let's try a hash round. What happened? Hash is a thin metal shell filled with plastic explosive and equipped with a delayed action fuse. When the shell hits the target, it splits up against the armor. The sudden stop initiates the fuse at the back of the shell, which detonates the HE filling, sending shockwaves through the armor. The shockwave meets the inside of the armor plate, reflects back and hits the next shockwave, shattering the inside face of the armor plate in the process and sending shards of metal flying throughout the interior of the tank. Yes, you basically damage the equipment and injure the crew with fragments of their own vehicle. But alas, this design has its flaws. For instance, these rounds, while very effective against solid armor, are easily defeated by spaced armor or spole liners. As a result, hash rounds have almost vanished from the modern battlefields. But you can still use them in War Thunder, and they are as lethal as ever. And now we get to the last part of today's episode, Hotline. Get ready for some answers from the developers. Strictly speaking, it's not the most serious-minded section of the show. If you want answers to be given with solemn faces, feel free to appeal to the official forums. Here we'll have a more light-hearted discussion of the big questions of War Thunder. We'll hope you like it. When are you going to implement new sounds? I want to hear big guns go boom! We do too, buddy. We do too. Right now, we are working on a big set of new sounds for tank engines. At the same time, we're planning a massive overhaul of all engine sounds for aircraft. We we'll hope you'll notice these changes very soon. What are the chances of ever seeing the Grand CDL? Sadly, we do not plan to add this vehicle to the game. But there are quite a few examples of British ingenuity in War Thunder, so please do not despair. When will the BF-109Z be added? It is very unlikely that this will ever happen. Only one plane was built, and it was never flown. And the biggest problem is that there is a lack of reliable data concerning the plane's characteristics. So, no luck there. That's it for the day, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. See you on the shooting range!